John MacArthur shows up to the final night of Shepherd's Conference, weak, ill, bruised, and all. But he's out of uniform. What does he do? Steve Lawson's going to talk to us about the importance of the preacher's uniform. What does it matter what a preacher wears? And lastly, we're going to address the issue of idolatry. Is honoring men who faithfully preach the word for decades a respectable thing to do? Is it right or is it idolatry? We're going to hear from Erin Coates in her Instagram post where she addresses this issue. This is the wife of James Coates, who was imprisoned for faithfully shepherding his flock. You won't want to miss this. Welcome to Truth Transforms. My name's Adam Markley. We're going to dive into it and take a look at these things that I just stated. Yes, John MacArthur, he shows up to Shepherd's Conference. He's, he's bruised. He's sick. He's recovering from heart surgery just six weeks earlier. He also had a fall and he fractured his wrist. He, he bruised his head. And uh, what does he do when he comes out there? Especially when he considers himself out of uniform. There's a preacher's uniform. And we're going we're gonna to get into that. Steve Lawson's going to tell us why it's so important what a preacher wears. And as I mentioned earlier, you're going to want to stick around to the end so we can hear from Erin Coates. She addresses the issue as to whether the honoring of John MacArthur is respect, honor, or is it idolatry? You want to make sure you stick around to the end. Well, let's dive into it and let's look at John MacArthur. Here we've got a picture of Carl Hargrove, one of the elders at the church with John MacArthur. And he says, a warrior at 83. Six weeks after having five stents, then an accident, fractured wrist, but still hoping to close ShepCon this evening. John MacArthur is among the rare breed. Pray for him. Well, certainly many were praying for him. Many were praying for him, and we're going to see the very first words out of his mouth uh, when he approaches the pulpit that night and we're going to come back to this later i'm not going to show you the whole thing right now that's just not how this works you got to stick around to the sports and the weather at the end but we're going to show you a little bit Thank you. apparently the reports of my death have been highly exaggerated <laughs> There you go. The reports of his death have been highly exaggerated. <laughs> he gets a, a, oops, a standing ovation. And I'm trying to get out of here. Uh, he gets a standing ovation as he comes out and uh, cracks a joke. And uh, classic MacArthur and great uh, way to begin begin the night there. Now, what we're going to look at is, uh, oh, well, let's, let's show you this too. This is kind of fun. Well, I hope you're enjoying this episode on preaching. And I just want to say that if you're a preacher, or you know a preacher, or you just want to support the ministry, you're going to want to pick up your Preaching for God's Glory coffee mug today. Uh, it's a great reminder, if you are a preacher, to always be preaching for God's glory, and it'd be a great way to remind your pastor that he ought to always be preaching for God's glory. God bless, and back to the show. Hey, real quick, we are going to get back to the show, I promise. But since you're watching this at the time of the Shepherds Conference, you get 15% off until March um, 16th, March 16th. So keep that in mind. And uh, there's other merchandise available now as well. All right, back to the show, and God bless. This is MacArthur as he went on to preach Zechariah. Uh, three chapters through Zechariah, the Master Seminary posts this. He's just trucking away, trucking away. He dealt with eschatology. He dealt with uh, an issue that he thinks is very important. I think is very important. Nobody seems to be talking about it. So apparently he's going to be talking about it now. Uh, eschatology is not the study of the end times, not something that I intend to get into publicly in the very near future. But I do have great concerns about some teachings out there. And he gets into that. And uh, so that's something that uh, we'll probably hear more from him and others at the Masters about in the near future, because he gave as a gift to the pastors there 
a 400-page commentary through the book of Zechariah. And apparently he's dealing, uh, working on some commentaries through other books of the Bible, through other prophetic books. And so uh, that's, uh, that's very, very well needed, I think, because certainly there are brands of post-millennialism, which is all the rage now, so very popular these days, and uh, lots of dominionism coming out of that, and we've got to take over the world, take over the government, and uh, I see it as a great issue, and others see that as a great issue as well. Clearly, John MacArthur does. So I'm looking forward to seeing him tackle that, even though I understand that he's his health is not great and he's kind of winding down on things. Uh, but at the same time, he's clearly uh, going to be heavily involved in some commentary that's going to be fighting against these issues. Theonomy is the name of it, if you're wondering. Theonomy is the name of something that you'll want to make yourself aware of if you're not aware of and you will be coming more and more aware of it. It is uh, spreading like gangrene. Well, let's move on to other things. Um, yeah, it's not really the point of, of this at all. So I'm uh, taking a moment to decide if I'm leaving that in there or not. All right, well, let's go ahead and show you what you came for. And uh, just promise me you're going to watch to the end because Aaron Coates got some really good things to say about whether uh, John MacArthur is being respected or whether this is idolatry. You definitely want to watch that. But let's give you what you want here. Uh, we want to hear what John MacArthur says next. Let's get that back on the screen. I'll back it up just a tiny bit. After they give the standing ovation, uh, here's what he has to say. Reports of my death have been highly exaggerated. <laughs> It's an incredible experience, isn't it, to worship the Lord like that? Sing great theological truth from the depths of your heart. I'm looking at Lawson down here because I know I'm out of uniform. But I, I couldn't tie my tie, Steve. So I'm just asking if you would loan me one of your clip-ons. Yeah, you certainly don't have one. You gotta love Lawson's laugh. Uh, he goes on to ask him if he has a bow tie, maybe. He definitely doesn't have a bow tie uh, either. <laughs> so uh, that's what that's all about. He's saying, well, I'm out of uniform. I'm out of uniform. Well, what's the big deal with what a pastor wears? Well, we're going to hear from Steve Lawson about that. He's going to share with us why he thinks it's so important that a pastor takes seriously what he wears. Let's go ahead and play that for us. In this session, I want to address a question that I'm often asked, why do I always wear a coat and tie when I preach? And as I travel uh, around, I always wear a coat and tie. And I I'll give you some of the thoughts that are going on in my mind. I want to stress, I do not have a chapter and verse for this, I also want to stress, you do not have a chapter and verse for the way that you dress. So this is um, preference. Uh, these are just my thoughts, but there is a rhyme and a reason um, as to why I do. Uh, it really begins, number one, with as I preach the Word of God, uh, especially on a Sunday morning or a Sunday night worship service, I see myself as the worship leader. Whoever has the Bible, whoever has the Word of God is in the position of leading the people of God to the very throne of grace, into the very palace of heaven. And as I am leading people in worship, um, I want to look as though I am going into the presence of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I, I, I don't want to present myself as one who looks like I just got back from a pajama party, or, or as someone who just fell out of bed, as if this really is not important here in worship. Um, I want to convey that this is the most important hour of the week. Uh, nothing else takes precedence 
over the worship of God. In fact, the church began to worship on the first day of the week as opposed to the Sabbath in the Old Testament to prioritize worship, corporate worship and coming into the presence of God. To me, uh, just the way my mind works is that as I would lead the people of God, it would be incongruent for me to present myself as though I'm cleaning out my garage but to come into the presence of God. It's just a disconnect for me. Now, I don't have a chapter and verse for this. Uh, it's more of a worldview um, answer to this. But I want to give the appearance that what I'm doing with the Bible is very, very important. So if anything, I will overdress, not underdressed to reflect that. Of course, this goes back to my childhood, and I think I've spoken on a previous podcast about this, that every Saturday night my father would come into my uh, bedroom and we would lay out my clothes for the next day on Sunday. And we would get my shoes, go down to the kitchen, we would shine my shoes, we would lay out my, my shirt, it would be ironed, we would iron my pants. Everything was ready for the next day on Sunday. Nothing was an afterthought. Nothing was incidental for Sunday morning. And as a young boy, it just underscored in my mind, this is important. This is important to my father. And whatever is important to my father became important to me. Now, I realize it's just the outward appearance. Uh, man looks on the outward appearance, 1 Samuel 16, 7. But God looks upon the heart, and someone would, may say, well, see, it doesn't matter the external. No, you missed the point of the verse. Man does look on the outward appearance. God looks upon the heart. The outward appearance is important. In 1 Timothy 2, Paul tells women uh, how not to dress uh, when they come to church in such a way as to draw attention to themselves and so, with flashy jewelry. So the Bible does have something to say. Um, about this. But in my mind, I am the worship leader and I am wanting to lead the people of God into the very presence of God, into the throne room above. So that, that's the main idea that's going on in my mind. Also, I see myself as an ambassador of the King. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 says that I'm, I'm an ambassador of God, representing Him before men. And so, I see myself really as an extension of the throne of God, like a herald in the Roman Empire would come into the, into the palace and receive the message from um, Caesar and then be dispatched to the perimeter of the Roman Empire. Uh, I see myself as an, as an ambassador representing Jesus Christ wherever I go. And though it is only the outward appearance, I just don't want to look like an unmade bed uh, when I show up and downgrade or de-emphasize uh, the importance of what I'm doing with a sloppy um, appearance. In addition, my style of preaching is not chit-chatty, it's not informal, it's not casual, it's not cool, it's not kickback. I, I'm really a herald. I'm a proclaimer. Uh, of the Word of God. I'm wanting to take people down deep into the text that they would rise up high to the very presence of God. And for me, it would be inconsistent to, to just um, um, preference. Uh, these are just my right. thoughts, but there is a rhyme and a reason. Um, Chit-chatty, but then of course not. There are different cultures around the world straightforward manner does it have to be a coach this is uh, he's, he's got me ready to preach uh <laughs> so i'm just waiting for the clip to be done to preach but the the fact that yes the there's such casualness and just chit chattiness rather than being a herald of the word of god uh preaching with authority saying thus saith the lord because his revealed word is here in my hands uh, not this is just time of a, of a chit chat and let me just preach to you in some sweatpants and sneakers I uh, I'll say more about that in a minute finish it up dr. Lawson I want to talk to the people entire of course not there are different cultures around the world 
I would just say, uh, for me, that I want to give the appearance that this is very important, what I'm doing. It's not unimportant, it is important. And with various cultures around the world, that can vary. And obviously different economic levels. Um, for me, and I've been without most of my life as a preacher, um, it's just whatever is the best I have to put on, that's what I want to put on. And wealth is a relative thing. And for many people, my best is their worst. I understand that. But whatever is the best for me, that's what I want to put on as I go to church on the Lord's Day, and especially as I stand before the people of God. Please hear me say, I'm not uh, imposing this on anyone. These are just my thoughts and my ideas. Plus, as I wear a coat and tie, I do get upgrades on airplanes, all right? And I get discounts at airports because people think I work for American Airlines. So there are some advantages. Of course, I'm being tongue in cheek as I say that. Just think about how you present yourself as you stand before the people of God to expound the Word of God. Thank you. All right, you heard the man. Put it in the comments. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I, I can already read the comments. I can see your comments right now. How legalistic. How legalistic. How dare you tell people. You heard him, right? You heard him say this isn't a law. This is what he does. This is why he wears a coat and tie. I don't preach in a tie. I've pastored rural churches, and so I've, I've just wanted to make sure that I was uh, dressed above them. Uh, it, uh, like whatever the normal dress code is, it, I, I felt that like the churches that I pastored, I felt like if I walked out in a suit, uh, <laughs> which I, I did wear suits on special days and special occasions like Christmas, Resurrection Sunday, uh, but I, I don't even know what they would think if I wore a suit in a church like that. Uh, but I just think that, you know, there's something wrong when when the pastor, when the preacher doesn't want to dress uh, in, in a reverent way. They don't, they don't want to dress up at all. You know, the, the growing trend is this casualness. Let me wear some sweatpants and, and sneakers, and, and I'm going to bring to you the word of God. Like, I don't, you know, I, I don't have, um, I, it may seem like I have strong feelings. <laughs> I don't have that strong of feelings about preaching attire just as long as the person's put themselves together and is preaching the word of God with authority. I guess I just expect that a pastor is going to dress respectably. I guess I just expect that he's going to be professional in how he presents himself. I guess I just expect that he's going to, uh, to, to want to appear like a respectable person uh, and, and not like someone we grabbed off the street. You know, I guess I just have a little bit of expectation of that. Obviously, uh, Lawson even even alluded to it. There are different cultures, and things are different in different cultures, and so uh, I do understand that. But um, there's just a, a dress your best is kind of the point there. Dress your best, and but now you have some context for MacArthur coming out, not having a tie. And I, it, you know he felt weird about it. He couldn't even tie, he couldn't tie his tie and he felt weird about it. And so the best thing to do is make a joke and ask Lawson, who's known for his ties, his uh, <laughs> very, um, very expensive, very nice ties. <laughs> you got a clip on Lawson? <laughs> so anyway, I hope you found that amusing. Don't go away yet because the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Is this idolatry? Uh, is this um, respect? Is this honor? Is this, what is this? The, the fact that people seem to like um, the faithfulness of John MacArthur's preaching and others like him. Uh, Aaron Coates seemed to be getting a lot of comments about the fact that, well, maybe this is, maybe this is idolatry. Maybe it's that. And we're gonna, we're, I'm going to read that for you. Let me show you this here first. I think this is neat. The Shepherds Conference uh, just released here today, or that's yesterday. Today's the 12th. Uh, they just released here today, yesterday, general session notes. And they've got notes of all of the sermons. And so you can go and see those before the sermons are released. 
and uh, each of these, this is like a highlight, I think. You click on read notes, and it's got like a fairly, uh, it's got a pretty good outline almost of the sermon there. So that's that's neat, and that's available at uh, with the TMS blog, I guess, blog.tms.edu. So that's just available for anyone that's interested in that. Oh, I'm not even, are you serious? I'm not sharing my screen. So <laughs> am I going to re-record that part because I'm not sharing my screen? I don't know, but here it is. And um, so there, here's what I was talking about a minute ago. And, and, uh, and maybe I'll put it on the screen so I don't have to re-record it. But it's got notes from the sermons. Okay, let's get to what you're waiting for. You're like, show me already. All right, I'll show you. Aaron Coates, whose husband was imprisoned for just being a faithful shepherd and saying, we're going to meet while the government continues to lie to us about all kinds of things, all kinds of things I'm not allowed to say on YouTube. And they lied to us about these things. And so we're going to read this. Let me make it bigger. Another Shepcon in the books. I am so thankful Pastor John made it into the pulpit. What a way to end the conference. Speaking my eschatological love language. Move it over so you can still see the picture. I can't feel, I can't help but feel a little saddened at the mudslinging online. It seems the professing church's definition of love and affection is so lacking that honoring a pastor is likened to idolatry. When Dr. Stephen J. Lawson stood to express his love for MacArthur, it should have been seen for what it was, a Timothy honoring his Paul. Hey. J. Mac is not some celebrity pastor to Lawson. He is his mentor, a man who has labored for decades until Christ has been formed in him. Galatians 4.19 Should he have called J. Mac up and wept aloud, falling on his neck, kissing him like the Ephesian elders? Acts 20.37 Maybe it would have been better to have offered to pluck his eye out for him. Galatians 4.15 Maybe express his longing and zeal for him. 2 Corinthians 7.7 7. Would that have been too much? Or are the believers that Paul... Or are the believers that Paul was a father to have an idolatry problem too? Did they have an idol idolatry problem too? Did I read that wrong? Would that have been too much? Or, okay. These men don't love J-Mac or J-Mac for J-Mac. They love him because he has been used by the Spirit to show them Christ, and in some cases resulting in salvation. Many times in Scripture we are told to imitate those who imitate Christ to follow their example. Paul even says that, she goes on to say he says that, but he says that in Philippians 4.9, he says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And she says, so Paul even says to follow his teachings. I fear if J-Mac, keep getting the mouse in the wrong place, I fear if J-Mac said such things, he would be accused of wanting people to worship him. I'm thankful for all the pastors who have voiced their love for J-Mac, remembering those who led you, who spoke the word of God to you, and imitating their faith. Hebrews 13.7 You have done well in sharing all good things with the one who teaches you. Galatians 6.6 6. Your sincere love of the brethren, brethren is admirable as you fervently one another from the heart are devoted to brotherly love and giving preference to one another in honor. Be assured 
the love, zeal, and deep affection is also toward you from Pastor John, praying for you as you enter back into the trenches. Soli Deo Gloria. To God alone be the glory. To God alone be the glory. So we're wrapping it up. Almost done. I've got something else important to show you. Something else important to show you. You don't want to go anywhere else. This is a bonus. It's available at preachingforgodsglory.org. Just so happens to be my website. And what you want to do is go to this Preach to My Inbox, fill out your name and email, and you'll get a weekly email highlighting what I do here on the channel in this ministry. That's going to be important. And then you'll want to go ahead and subscribe so that you can follow on YouTube. Definitely, you'll want to do that. And uh, next, let me tell you what to do next. After you've subscribed and you've liked this video, go ahead and like it. Now you want to watch this video. A revival has broken out at Grace Community Church. Watch it. You want to find out what happened. A revival broke out. All right. I'll see you in the next video. God bless.